uh, how to boost your career as a Wi-Fi professional. My name is Keith Parsons. I'm with wirelesslandprofessionals.com, and I tweet at Keith R. Parsons. My name is Chris Little. I run wifikiwis.com, and I'm on Twitter as Wi-Fi Kiwi. Sean Rainierson. I tweet at S. Rainierson, and wifigeeks.org is my blog. I'm Dan Sabalski. Uh, my website is simplywifi.co, and I tweet as simplywifi. My name is Jennifer Huber, and I tweet under Jennifer Lucille, and I have a link to my blog under my Twitter profile. In this section, we're going to talk about a, a, just a couple of things that have to do with uh, how you boost your career. It, I mean, we're here, we're at Airheads Conference, so a couple of things I'd like to talk about in this section. One is, we're all here at Airheads Conference, what's your reaction and why do you think people should come and how does that help their career? Another thing we'd like to talk about is how would, if you're new in this industry, how would you get started? What, would, what kind of steps would you like to take? And finally, we'll, we'll kind of throw out the last little bit on uh, you, what you think the value of certifications are. So the first topic is Airheads. We're here at the conference, what do you think? How does this help your career? Um, I, I really enjoy the uh, Airheads conference and um, the two major things that I, I really like about it is the, the workshops that go on, being able to get educated from Aruba people directly on what they're doing with the technology that they're introducing and, and where they're going. And the networking aspect, being able to network with my peers, being able to talk to uh, other people in the industry and get to know what they're doing. Yeah, you, you said it right there. Uh being able to network with everybody. When do you ever have this many airheads in one single building? <laughs> well, there is a the community. Uh, <laughs> there's something about being here yes. physically yes. that has benefits, but there's also online communities, and not everyone can be here, so do you, are you involved there as well? Well, the interaction can start with the airheads community, yeah. and then when you come to something like this, you meet the actual people that you're talking with. Right. Like, this is the like, same thing with Twitter, like meeting somebody in, in real life it, it far supersedes just the online communication. It just further reinforces the human-to-human -human connection. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad we have these. And yeah. Turn yours around, Dan. Here's so like the Wi-Fi <laughs> password. <laughs> <laughs> See, how amazingly people walk up and go, oh, I know you. And, and yes. I, my, my Twitter avatar is, a, is not my face because it's not as pretty as the cartoon I have. And they're like, you actually look pretty close to your cartoon. <laughs> they they can find close. you. So. Yeah. yeah to, uh, I, I would pl probably place more importance on the networking side than I would on the, the breakout sessions. I've, I've been getting a lot of good information out of the breakout sessions, but um, I th the breakout sessions to me are, those are things that I, I probably, because I work for a partner, I could still get that information if I didn't come, but the networking I couldn't possibly get. Um, but it's nice to get it all in one location at, at one time, but networking is probably more important. For it me. might be the level that you are. I mean, it, you know, you know a good bit about wireless and and Aruba products. Someone coming in fresh, you know, wanting to yeah. learn about Aruba, yep. it's really good on and both sides. I think if you were a new partner, this would be invaluable. Yes. yes. You have to, to jump start and to be able to get it together. So I agree. I agree. Yeah. So coming to conference, we kind of agree. Mm -hmm. yep. There's value in 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 the face to face time that we get together. Uh, the next topic we're going to talk about is uh, how do you get started in Wi-Fi? Now a lot of us have started and. Having talked quite a bit about this, a lot of us started as route switch guys. And I, I think that is a critical must have in to be a good wireless person. Um, later we'll talk about what are the other things we might want to have, but how would you get started if you wanted to get in this? Um, I'd say CCNA level knowledge first, route switch, maybe a network plus kind of level, but at least. The, you, you totally understand the OSI model. On top of that, how would you get started in, in focusing on Wi-Fi? Well, if, if you know how to turn a wrench, just start out and join, be an installer. That's what, that's what my job four years ago. I was in, installing on a couple DOD bases, uh, started hanging out with the engineer that we had there, learning when we go back to the hotels, mm -hmm. and then finally progressed to be the engineer for my team. And that, that's how I started. Um, also with Twitter, uh, I'm meeting people on Twitter and getting the information from you guys. That, that's how I got here today, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I think in, in terms of starting out, uh, it, one of the critical importance is having gear to actually be able to try things out and play things around with. Having a, I, I think having a home lab is essential. Uh, whether your employer will sponsor that or uh, you have the ability to go out and get it yourself. And I think 
even in a lot of the certification realms, the route switch, for example, they encourage you to go out and get gear and build your own home lab to be able to actually have hands-on time yourself in your own time learning that away from not, the day. I mean to interrupt you, but how many of you raise of hands have a home lab? Yep. You guys, how many of you have home lab? I mean, I if, see if you six or seven out there. And if, if you honestly, Basically everyone. if you don't have the money or ability to have a home lab, then maybe there's some spare parts that can be used at the office and you just stay there after hours. Right. I knew some people that did that in lieu of actually having the, because that was back before you could virtualize the switch. You didn't have the, the Bosun software at that time. So they would just stay there after work and, and tinker in their cube. So right. they Let's go back to you. Right. Huh? I, would finish. Yeah. I, learned, I, I got yeah. legacy equipment off of eBay. And that's, that's, awesome. yeah. that's what I learned off of. So um, to, distill, I, I, to get back to your original question of, how, to, how you get into it. I think there's there's two ways. There's the hard way, which is kind of put yourself off in your own little world and study and practice in your lab by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> foolishly, that's how I did it <laughs> for, for, for several years um, until I realized, well, if I reach out to people, um, I can actually learn a lot faster. Um, and then there's the easier way, which I would put more as a, a, a mentoring type if, if you can find someone who's willing to take a chance on you and invest some time in you and, and kind of lead you uh, down the, the correct path and help you out, um, that, that's invaluable. Um, I think it's, as the technology kind of gets more and more complicated, which, which it is, the mentorship way is going to be really the only, the only way, whether it's a set out program or if you just have someone who knows a lot about wireless that you can ask how would, how would you recommend someone who's new find a, find a mentor? Um, well, you can start in the Airheads community, right? If you, if you want to learn about Aruba specifically, or even just wireless fundamentals, you can go to community, mm -hmm. things like that, social media websites. Yeah, there's yeah. a CWNP community as well, mm -hmm. which has a similar forums and websites to the yeah. Airheads one. And I, I don't know of anyone who's, who's on Twitter in the Wi-Fi space who wouldn't be willing to mentor yeah. someone. Yes. Yeah. That, so, that's, like I said, that, thank you guys. And, uh, uh, Marcus Burton uh, from, we used to be with CWNB. I asked him probably a million questions as I was uh, studying and training. Did he ever have any trouble answering you? Nope. No. Never. <laughs> so. And he didn't mind. He would send me emails, half pages, full pages long, answering, right. answering things. So, yeah. Yeah. so I, I, I like your mentor idea. I think it's a fantastic mm -hmm. way. Uh, as, a, as a transition from getting started, home labs, study on your own, the bad way, <laughs> or get mentors <laughs> makes it a little easier. It's, what it's do you think about education good. and certification? And I and, and I separated those two on purpose. About how would you go about getting educated? What were you studying? And then what do you think about the value of the certifications that are out there? Yeah, my my first wireless book was the CWNA textbook. Um, I just picked that up and kind of read it a couple times and did my certification. From there, I just kind of did many other things as I could so I tried to stay vendor neutral originally when I was learning because um, it was kind of all on my free time it wasn't uh, we didn't really have a wireless team <laughs> at the time where I worked so uh, I stayed vendor neutral and then as we became a group of partners I had to obviously focus more on that area but uh, I would say start off vendor neutral vendor neutral cert so CWNA um, even I've, I've noticed there's a few new certs that don't really get talked about a lot um, and uh, SANS has one that's not really new, it's a GAWN, it's Auditing yes, Wireless right. Networks. Right. Um, the offensive security guys have some, so if, if you're more of a security person and you actually want to um, focus on that, or you still need to understand the fundamentals, so I would still start at CWNA, or if you're more sales focused, maybe CWTS or something like that. Uh, there are those, all these kind of very affordable certs and courses that you can do online and they have practical exams that you do over the internet um, that are now becoming available outside of just generic RF technology deployments. Jennifer, how'd you get educated? I mean, well, you're, you're a CWNE, so yeah, you obviously right. know <laughs> lots. How, how did when, you get to that process? When I started out doing wireless, as far as I remember, I mean, I did some Googling at the time, but at that time I was just reading white papers and reference guides. There weren't any study materials. So mm -hmm. CWNA, I don't think existed until I got my next job mm -hmm. doing wireless. And then once I was uh, reading those books, it was like then it was when it came to full realization, like all that I did not know. So, and it was a wonderful resource because I would think back at the projects that I'd worked on, like, wow, that was.
was really, really wrong. Now I know, <laughs> now I understand you why it was it wrong, too. and I can explain it. And I find that the, as I study and I take certifications, if I can't explain it to somebody else and help them understand it, then I don't really know what I'm doing. So mentoring other people, like people asking me questions, is a really great way for me to figure out what I don't know so well and what I need to work on still, because you can't know everything all at the same time. So it helps me help somebody else. The, more, the, the better I can explain it, the better I understand it myself. But yeah, it's CWNA, CWSP, there's nothing well, better. I'm, I'm gonna make a kind of weird statement here. I, I wish that I didn't have a job where I went around and fixed other people's wireless. It'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I have that work as a consultant is because so many people install but don't know the fundamentals. Yep. Yes. They're, they miss, they, they know how to, they think of APs as switches and they install them like it's a switch. Mm -hmm. and it's a hub and they haven't installed hubs forever. They don't understand RF so they're just putting them out there yep. and then we have to go back and fix the problems. It would go away if everyone got the fundamentals first. So I like CWNA as table stakes yes. mm -hmm. you've that's just the if you're in this industry you need to have at least that level of knowledge I really don't care if you pass the test or no. even take the test but if you have that level of knowledge why not just take the test right if you can't pass it you don't have that level of knowledge you know so the cert itself I don't think it has value just because you have a piece of paper oh I have a CWNA but it's just proof that says I have this base level knowledge that's the bottom to get in the game mm -hmm. and then we've got a work on top of that. And I think that's an important distinction as well is the certificates are as much about the learning process that you yeah. use to pass them as the certificate itself. And I, I just reiterate, it's not the cert yeah. and so you don't have to have the cert but if you can't pass the test you don't have the knowledge. Yes, right. it's being able to speak intelligently about what you've read, learned and understood or things that you've done. If you can't verbalize all of the, the education process or the actual doing of something then it's not really there. And you're saying CWNA is the bottom, but I know I, I'd already configured maybe two or three controllers. I was still at the beginning of my of my uh, career. Once I bought that CWNA in a book, I was like, I can't believe all this stuff that I have no idea. What, what is this? I, I thought I knew wireless configuring this controller. Yeah. And it just the amount of information you learned from that first book is is really invaluable and i think your experience will be is duplicated over and over people say oh i installed wireless and then i learned oh did i yeah did that <laughs> oh when you go back and or, or you go like, that's what that little yes. checkbox really means yes. I, <laughs> I just unchecked it because it was there yeah. yeah yeah so any any final things on uh how you'd get moving my my comment would be let's uh get on twitter mm -hmm. there's more than enough and there's lots of links you can go to find other people on twitter Read the blogs. I can think of the good 20 wireless land professional blogs. Get on the community and get started. CWNA is minimum and start. Yeah. And we're, yours, home lab. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Everyone Absolutely. I know who's good at this has a home lab. If you don't, and I'm not talking about having a Linksys. I mean, that's, if that's all you have, that's a good place to, to practice and there's a lot you can do there. You could put some yeah, third party. WDRT so or whatever or it's called like on there. It, it helps. At least yeah. you're taking you can learn fundamentals that, point, that could be a Soho deployment yeah. step to, to get into a job where you're doing things like that for so, really, really small companies that have to use mm -hmm. that type of gear for price points. But, and then it goes from there. It's but easy. I think your point of Sean was WDRT, WR, anyway, yeah. that, you know what it is. <laughs> um, allows you to get into some of the enterprise yes. features yes. that aren't normally in Linksys right. and mm -hmm. test them and look at the packets. Packets are everything, so.